safari live it is an absolute scorcher out here today it's a uh, 104 fahrenheit 40 degrees celsius my name is brent leo smith i have brian joubert on camera we have jamie and andrew in the other vehicle and we have lou and kirsty in final control as you can see that kudu was sitting in the shade we're doing the same trying to keep away from the sun for as long as possible but let's go see there were quite a few animals who were being sensible and hiding in the shade we are in that area where we had tracks for male leopard this morning and I am 100% convinced that, that male leopard is completely immobile at the moment, wherever he might be. I've still got a sort of inclination that he's in the drainage system there. But it is blistering really warm. And it does look like a sort of a storm building, but still far, far away. Everything's hanging out in the shade. Let's see now, we've got some zebra, some impala, all trying to keep away from this beating African sun. So in this type of heat, it's quite a dangerous time for old animals and young animals. Yeah, you know, there's that zebra with the fall we saw this morning. See the fold just behind, and there's a bunch of impala. Most of the babies are flat on the ground, and there's almost not a noise, hardly any birds. Let's see, very even, even very little chewing of the cud going on. One female there chewing away, the others of just standing and even behind us the birds that are normally the kings of the open grasslands oh, don't run away now oh, we're hiding in this little thicket they've moved slightly now so they're trying to keep away from us but hiding in the shade and just walked out into the sun now but there's some crowned lapwings there we go, hiding in the shade, which is a very unusual place to find them. Oh, look at that, it's a little one. There's a little chick there. Oh, and both parents. I mean, there's literally not a bird noise apart from the little chirps from those lap wings. There's not an ox pecker on the zebra or impala. And even earlier today, Eugene, one of our tech guys, had kingfishers flying into his room and just sitting on the bed in front of a fan to try cool down. Uh, we're going to go find a spot of shade to, to walk. There we go, there's that bat, little zebra falls popped out. But we're going to keep moving, try not perish in this sun. And while we were just speaking about kingfishers, Jamie's got one for you. We have one very very hot woodlands kingfisher i'm sure that brent has touched on the fact that it is 100 degrees fahrenheit this afternoon and this little one is panting away that open beak is the pretty much the only way it has to cool down apart from quick dips in the water although at the moment having a look at buffles hook dam it doesn't really seem like all that appealing a prospect. The buffalo seem happy. Wallowing in the... Uh, what, is, what would be the word for that water? Tepid would be a good description. Stagnant, green, slightly stinky. And it seems that all that it's become good for is a wallowing patch for Duggar boys.
the wind is starting to howl. I'm hoping that might bring an end to some of the heat, but at the moment it's blowing hot, dry air. It is basically, essentially like sitting facing a hairdryer as it zooms past Andrew and myself. We did manage to find ourselves the one small patch of shade at Buffleshook Dam. We came to investigate and see what's happening around here. That being said, I don't think that all that much in terms of general game is going to come and head across and drink at this particular dam. It really is very stagnant and very green and rather smelly. Even the woodlands is taking it easy. <coughs> Paul, you are absolutely right. It is scorchingly hot. The buffalo have painted themselves in mud <coughs> in an attempt to cool down. A spa treatment of note. Hello, boy. And you have to feel for these animals <coughs> living without any kind of air conditioner. Or fan. And essentially just having to rely on the mud. Now that water is probably about the same temperature as the day. And all they're really relying on is a little bit of a wind chill factor as well. But yes, it is scorching today. That one is almost completely submerged. Well, Wayne, if you missed out on this morning's drive, despite the heat, we have a new arrival at Juma. You were wondering when it was born. Well, we happened to catch most of the birth live on this morning's safari from the start. We went out onto quarantine and she was already going into labor. <coughs> and we were lucky enough to see the feet starting to stick out and then the nose before eventually it got to the point that she disappeared off into a thick block. And it was only really right at the end when the calf was born and running around that we finally got to see it. But it's obviously had a nice drink. It's dried off now and you might have been watching the Juma Dam camera because it just came down in the last few minutes. It came down for its first access to water and its first proper drink of water. So really, really amazing stuff to have been able to witness that. We, set, we spent essentially six hours with wildebeest between yesterday afternoon and this morning. And it really, really paid off in being able to share that wonderful... Actually, I would say I was at a loss for words in witnessing that entire momentous event this morning in the sun rising sun with dust and steam coming off the mother. It's absolutely incredible to witness. And then to see that wobbly little new life wandering about on spindly legs, looking a bit dazed and confused, but still healthy and happy. And it's a perfect time for her to have had that baby because on a day like today with weather like this, there is not a savvy cat around or predator around that's going to be out and about and hunting. So that wildebeest has had that whole morning or whole day stretch to get more stable on its legs, build up its muscles a little bit, get that coordination right before facing the night ahead. And all we can do really is keep our fingers crossed that that little one makes it through its first few weeks of life. It's the most dangerous time for it, but we'll hopefully it will survive. Now somebody asked me a little bit about tick loads and parasites. I'm just having a look at the ox pickers that are sitting on this poor buffalo. Doing him a service, of course. But Virginia, I know that you'd asked about whether or not the wildebeest calves will be subjected to ticks as soon as they are born. And I just wanted to tell you that shortly after we finished the show, we saw a lot of the babies with ox pickers on their backs helping to reduce the tick load. But that does mean that they already have ticks climbing around them. Imagine that soaking also helps. Look at that mud. It's just dry, cracked earth at this point. Uh, Claude Gate Cameras, who's watching on YouTube, 
You've said unless the rains come soon, you feel as if we're watching the slow death of the animals, or many animals. And you are right to an extent. It is heartbreaking to see, and it's going to be heartbreaking for a while still. The animals are going to struggle. Now, the only real prediction for the next rains will be at the end of 2016. So although we might have the odd drizzle, the odd downpour, it will not be enough to really undo the damage of the dry season. That being said, I think we might be in for a storm tonight, the way this wind is howling. I really hope so. Clouds are starting to build up to our, to the north and the west of us. Hopefully that means a little bit of relief from this incredibly intense heat. And even then it's going to take a huge amount of rain to actually really make up for. You can imagine how much water you would need to really start to fill up this dam again. It's quite terrifying to think about. And the animals that are going to suffer are going to be things like the buffalo, the elephants, all of the herbivores. It will be time of plenty for our cats and our hyenas and our wild dogs because all of the animals will be in a weakened state and much, much easier to hunt. So for them it will be a bonus season. But for buffalo like these guys, and that poor buffalo who looks positively like he's asleep and baking in the sun. It's going to be a hard year ahead. Just to give you some rough ideas of numbers, I suspect, it's not an official number, so don't quote me on it, but I suspect we've had somewhere in the region of about 50 mils of rain so far in this rainy season. We should have, on average, by the end of the rainy season, we should have around 500. I think the chances of us actually reaching that are fairly slim. Look, there's still hope. The most rains happen in around January, February, March. It could still come, but a lot of the experts have put forward some rather dire predictions about the state of the weather over the next year or so. Which is why we've got to enjoy the moments that we have had, for example, with that live wildebeest birth. Because those births are not going to be nearly as common next year if this weather continues. And shame, on the opposite bank is the Egyptian geese. The Egyptian goose. <coughs> and it seems as though all of our goslings that were around Bufflesuk Dam, it seems as though most of them have been or all of them have been killed and that's partly probably because of lack of access to food and grazing potential but also because the marabous have been targeting this area and making the most of all of the dead fish and Fiona you were wondering because there have been so many dead fish within this pond whether or not that algae is toxic and yes to an extent although at least it is oxygenating the water to some degree the biggest problem has actually been the heat so the dead fish were basically cooked in the water. They were not built to withstand these huge temperatures in such shallow water, and the water eventually gets to the <coughs> really, really high temperatures. And the water is stagnant, and it is in its own way toxic, because there's absolutely no, no real amount of oxygen within it. Birds are still fluttering about. There's our poor Egyptian goose pair that lost their babies. It's become quite a dire scene to come and visit Buffles Hook Dam at the moment, but hopefully very soon we'll be seeing a bit more in the way of rain. Right, I'm going to continue on my mission to see what's around the eastern edge of Juma, and while I do that, let's head back to Brent and see what he's up to. Still the hot as Hades, that hasn't changed. But Brian and I have devised a cunning plan to try to find the leopard. And we know from the tracks he's got to be in here somewhere. So we have now decided we are going to go to every major tree, every major thicket, every patch of shade, and, and check if we can spot him. Checking it very carefully through this block. 
But sometimes when it's this hot, leopards like to get up in a tree where there's a bit more breeze. I mean, it's so hot, the flies aren't even out. Oh, butterfly, a joker. I mean, keep on with a few butterflies. It's even so hot, most of the butterflies aren't moving. Let's see where he went. Should land. Where you go? Where you go? Still flying or landed? Cool. Um, that was a common joker. There it is. Is he going to land? On the other side of the bush, of course. Oh, he's coming back. You see, Brian? Mm -hmm. Oh, there it is. Okay, it's landed in that little hollow there. Hopefully, it doesn't take off again as we move. I thought it landed in the little hollow. There's a brown veined wife there as well. There's, oh, it's so fast. There you go, it landed over there somewhere. So even the butterflies are taking a refuge in the shade at the moment. It is that hot. They don't want to be fluttering about in this heat. Right, it looks like he's got the better of us. We will keep a lookout for other butterflies. That's one I still have to show you now, a common joker. The other one that got away from us this morning was the African monarch. Uh, these big marulas like this one here, we're checking up in the branches. I know there's a nice little nook, very thicket down off this way as well. A good place for a lip to hide from the heat. The only unfortunate thing is if he's in that temporary thicket, it will be near impossible to find. We can't drive in there. Oh, we've got a bit of an aerial battle going on there. Warburg's eagle being bombarded by a fork-tailed drongo. The only two birds we've seen this afternoon. <laughs> and that Warburg looks very lazy in his flights, like, dude, just leave me alone. I want to go sit in a tree where it's shady. Oh, off they go. Um, a very, very pertinent question by Rich King and you would like to notice the camera gear or the vehicles or other equipment start playing up when it's very hot it does believe it not Rich uh, I mean we've got really it's incredible the amount of punishment the gear does take uh, but we do have heat overheating problems sometimes uh, Brian and I actually had the camera get too hot and turn itself off once before and I am watching the heat gauge on the vehicle quite carefully. And I brought extra water just in case today for the vehicle. Well, it seems like we've got a We've started a bit of a butterfly thing this morning and Guru from India would like to know how many different types of butterflies in the side of the science. Guru, off the top of my head, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm guessing in the region between 50 and 100. And we've managed to put on camera how many this morning, Brian? Six, seven. We had yellow pansy, a wandering donkey, Christmas tree acria, and Brown Vane White. 
Oh, the little blue, that was that general blue species rather than the actual individual. Let me see, what else did we have? Did I see the yellow pansy? Six. And well, I am checking for more. Uh, the more common ones we see, those all of those I've mentioned are more common. Uh, and we should start seeing some Shiraxis as well quite soon after the rain. Looking like deep little bits of shade like that. There's no leopard in there at the moment. You can see on a termite mound. Storm seems to all the clouds are building up much faster than I expected. Could definitely do with a little shower. Give us a bit of a break from this heat. And even the wind is hot. I mean our it is amazing. Our, our rooms today were the same temperature as outside and doors open, windows open, fans blaring, and it still was incredibly hot. All we could do was try to keep ourselves wet.
Oh, there comes the sun again. And they've definitely found one of the only mud wallows that's not out in the sun. So on top of not evaporating quickly, it'll be a little bit cooler. Move the vehicle a little slightly. Just let them run for a few seconds so not to give them a fright. The adult female, she's very relaxed, just lying there watching us. And this, the two little ones, got a, a little bit of a fright. So I'm just try to move where I think they might be less threatened by us, maybe, or more curious. look like that. We'll come back here just now, let them relax a little bit and then we'll come back and we'll stop a bit further away. And we'd like to know, would the hyenas bring their cubs to the water in this heat? Not the little ones, the little ones would still stay at the den. As you can see these sub-adults that wander around with the adults now at this age, they'll definitely go to the den, out to the water. scouring this area for any sign of leopard or any animal in that fact. Uh, let's go see what Jamie's up to. <coughs> well, the nice thing is, is that the temperature has dropped a little bit and the sun is starting to disappear behind banks of clouds. It's looking incredibly pretty definitely feels a little bit cooler or be, might, maybe not might be my imagination but I feel like it feels cooler unfortunately it still comes with the, the biting stable flies that have been attacking both myself and Andrew so every now and again <laughs> Andrew's slapping his leg as I said that every now and again if you see us sort of disappearing into the footwell or if the camera goes shaking off into the distance wildly flung aside it's because we've been bitten by another fly and the problem is, it's not just the bites, it's the itch afterwards that really gets you. Hmm. There's a bird for your bird list calling. Let's see if it calls again. Finding it is going to be almost impossible. Not you, you attention seeker. Woodlands Kingfisher. I'm sure I heard a Sterling's Wren Warbler. No, all I can hear is a Kingfisher. <laughs> okay, well, we'll carry on. Oh, there it goes again. It's a Sterling's Wren Warbler. It's a tiny, tiny little brown, very plain colored bird. You hardly ever see them, but you do hear them quite a bit. I haven't heard them all that often on Juma. I'll listen again. And while we look at that, I'm not sure if you can hear that beep, 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 beep. That is a Sterling's Wren Warbler. I'll show you a picture of it in the book. Just so I'm afraid finding it's going to be incredibly tricky. You might have to settle for just hearing it. One that I've not often heard here. I saw something flap there, but it's just... Did you see something flapping in there? No, for a split second. Mm. 
then it's not our in that marula tree that could that sounds like exactly where it's coming from so andrew might have had the briefest of brief visuals this is the little bird i'm talking about tiny little creature 13 centimeters which is about six inches in height very cute little thing you hardly ever see them but you do hear them don't often hear them all right well that was just a very brief stop to add attempt to add a bird to your bird list but i think it's going to stay hidden away we'll continue down our drive along cheetah cut line the eastern edge of juma and see what other wondrous things we can spot for you whilst because actually if you sit for still for too long the flies will double in number as well now i've mentioned that i think the rain is coming and I know that, Joyce, you were wondering if the vegetation is going to survive the drought season ahead. And it will, to an extent, a lot of these trees will survive. The grasses might have a tougher time, but bear in mind that a lot of the really good quality grasses, blah, grasses? Grasses is not a word. <laughs> grasses are perennials. So a lot of them exist underground um, with long stretching rhizomes underneath the soil. They might be okay. It always amazes me how ecosystems have the ability to bounce back after a drought. But definitely most of the grasses that we're seeing at the moment will die away over the next few months. I know it looks vibrantly green and it must seem so ridiculous for us to be talking about a drought when everything looks so luminous and healthy. But that is not completely sustainable. We need it to be looking like this. We need the vegetation thick and dense for the next few months. And with this level of rain, it's just not sustainable to that extent. Oh, as we continue on our search for something weird and wondrous to show you, the weird and wondrous Brent, has found those hyenas again, so let's head back to him. So we've come back to the hyena beach. And looks like this little one might go in. Get into my bottle of water. It escaped me. There we go. It is incredibly warm at the moment. I'm hoping those hyenas are going to go for a swim. So we're just going to sit here quietly and wait. Not only will the water offer them a bit of a respite from the heat, it'll offer them a bit of respite from the biting flies. As I said today, it seems it's even too hot for them. Looks like they're just relaxing. I can hear some elephants trumpeting behind me somewhere. I think we might go have a look there shortly. And these hyenas are going to lie down. We can always pop back a little later. And Tax from Juma is on his way to join us with these hyenas. you spotted there, Brian? Ah, foam nest frog. Well spotted. So we're just going to make some space here for tax. There's not that much space for too many vehicles around here to have a look. for 
I'm gonna go to see where there's a Glovo or I can just hear them on Sandy Patch somewhere. Yeah, but I heard the Glovo pull into the fence this morning or they yari yesterday. Cheers guys, enjoy. Right. While we're sitting there, you can hear those elephants screaming. So let's go have a look there. Butterfly for the list to the left. Oh, you asked. No, that's a board. Ah, oh, that's the other one we had this morning. There we go. It's sitting on the edge. You go left, Brian. Sorry, a new one. There we go. Well, both of them now. So the one on the right is a vagrant, and there's the Joker as well. The one who escaped us earlier. There we go. Common Joker. African vagrant. African vagrant. Although it looks quite white, it's almost lime green. There we go. And then I'll get to the joke now. And then there's the broad banded grass yellow. I think, no, maybe it's a different yellow. I didn't see any black. Did you, Brian? When they're next to water and pans like this, we can sometimes get a bit closer without them taking off. So let's try. So they are collecting moisture. How's that, Brian? Well, the African vagrant, we know that one. So let's have a look at that little yellow. Try and see if it's got any black. I don't see any black there. Let's wait for him to open his wings first. Come on, little guy. Having a, he's a thirsty butterfly. We often find butterflies around the edge of these mud wallows and water holes. And what they're doing is getting a little bit of moisture. They're drinking, really, from the mud. And I'm just hoping this little guy opens his wings. Oh, he's a very thirsty butterfly. So I want to see if there's any black inside. Because it might not be the same species we saw this morning. The one we saw this morning was called a broad banded grass yellow. And it's got very big, thick sort of black wingtips and a band around the edge. Oh boy. Now I'm in trouble. Brian. Over there. And there is a little another little blue. And he's oh just took off. On his banded again. Ah uh, he's in the middle. Oh it's fine. Um Let's see if this little yellow guy, the blue will probably be without a butterfly net, near impossible to identify. And the little yellow, if he opens his wings. little guy well actually well while we wait for that one to finish its drink let's have a look at the african vagrant there you go it's sort of a yellowy but the outside the inside yellowy with those two spots and the outside almost has that sort of lime greenish color mm -hmm. and they're big fans of the cassias which aren't flowering yet but we will keep an eye out for them and then that's what the Larval stage looks like. 
Uh, and then, strange enough, there we go. There's the broad banded grass, yellow next to you, that we're wondering whether this one is. I don't think so. I think it's another one of the yellows. And it gets quite, quite complicated, the yellows. As you can see, lots of very similar looking species. Very thirsty butterfly drinking from the mud. Also a whole host of other insects doing the same. There's some wasps around. Oh, elephants. Hello. Well, when you're looking for um, butterflies, you get a huge herd of elephants approach. Cacks as well. A cool little clumber of endlove coming up behind you. Elephant. I'm just going to give them a chance. They might chase those hyenas. And elephants are one of the few animals that are able to move on these really hot days. They might be going for some mud. And they might actually go interrupt hyenas' beach day. Oh, look at that. Next nice bit of mud close by is the hyena mud. Standing by. Uh, highly mobile west through the block to the different mud wallows of virtual uh, access. Look at that. It's a pile of elephants in a tiny little mud wallow. Look at that. Your little guys. And Tax, who's with those hyenas, said before the elephants have even arrived, the hyenas have made themselves scarce from that water. So hyena beach day is being ruined by Ellie beach day, which is every day for an Ellie. flying around near those eddies. <laughs> that little guy is seriously enjoying the ride. Oh, here comes trouble. Back comes a bull and he looks like he's in a bit of a feisty mood. Chasing everyone off. Oh, and more Ellie's. Charging in the next load. Don't get cheeky with me, madam. I haven't moved. You came here. So these are definitely that big herd of elephants I heard trumpeting. Oh, look at them go. They look really thirsty. Um, so it's possible they might stop off where the hyenas were. So let's follow and have a look. Or they could be moving straight through to uh, a water hole that's past our boundary. Unfortunately, the hyena's private 
private resort has been discovered by a much bigger resort goer. This herd seems quite unrelaxed, not with us, but um, I think there's quite a few different bulls. There's another bull about to pop through. And I think they're giving them a bit of a hard time. Younger bulls. They're moving really highly mobile. We'll try to stay with them for a little bit. Larry was worried that the Eddie babies might be trampled in there. Don't worry, Larry. Eddies are quite good at not standing on their little ones. What I am hoping is maybe these elephants marching through here are going to chase that leopard we've been searching for. already across our boundary and yeah, going to that other big water hole that's uh, to the west of us. Oh, pandemonium of those bulls chasing them up and down. He says, isn't it awesome we can go from a tiny little butterfly to a, 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 the biggest animal in the bush, an elephant? And that water hole is down that road a little bit, so I'm just going to see if we can... Uh, I don't think we're going to be able to see too much more, but we'll stand by here anyway. And there's also another comment about it being elephant rush hour. They're off to a water hole called Heidi. We said it was elephant rush hour. And they're off to a water hole called One Eye Pan. We're going to turn around. I think I might uh, give this area a bit of a break because that's still that one ball on his way. with Taxon. Is that in Konzo or Tingana way across? Oh, yeah, that, Sabi Sands, I saw that Konzo before they dragged. Oh, okay. But I can't find Luton where to access on Parlor Road. And I've walked the Shkove here, and I've checked every bush. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to be sleeping here somewhere, it's so hot. Yeah. But, anyway. Yeah, we'll see. I'll try to go along um, the road. Okay. I think I'm going to go ahead down towards quarantine again. So in Chile we watch you guys. We're from California. Okay. Watch you. <laughs> well, really great to meet you. Uh, we'll pop in and say hi if you'd like. Um, We'd love to um, join the Sure, we'll definitely pop through you out for your teller. Yeah, yeah. that okay, would cool. be awesome. I mean, my husband is addicted. He's <laughs> always geared around when your show is <laughs> well, Isn't that great? Even out in the bush, we get Safari Live fans. <laughs> <laughs> They're coming to visit the bush for real this time. <laughs> well, it, awesome. Perfect, we will do. Okay. Oh. Have a good night, guys. Cheers. So, isn't that awesome? Out here in the middle of the African wilds, Safari Live here is from California. Uh, while we continue to try and guess what Mr. Tingana has been up to, uh, let's go and see what Jamie's doing. driving through the Mawati drainage line. Definitely one of the most beautiful places to come and experience. It also has the added advantage of being nice and shady and protected by thick vegetation. Everywhere, these little tiny brown things. I am not going to claim to be nearly quite the expert in butterflies that Brent is. 
But I will tell you there are lots and lots of them all around us. It's actually quite a special feeling driving through here with all of these butterflies fluttering around. There's something very Disney-esque about it. I know that Brent's been on the search for Tingana. And a drainage line is always a really good place to come and have a look. I'm also trying to see if I can follow up on where Karula was last seen. She was just a further, bit further to the west of us. But drainage lines like this are perfect hiding places for leopards. Lots of nooks, crannies, little hidey holes where a leopard might be lurking. So keep your eyes peeled because you never know what you're going to find around the next bend of the river. And that is what this is. We are essentially driving in a dry riverbed. about the heat. I'm not really complaining because personally I far enjoy being too hot over being too cold. But James Taylor, you were wondering if there's any animals out here that really enjoy the hot weather. And not that I can think of until you watch things like elephants having a wonderful mud bath and then they seem to be enjoying themselves just because they're escaping all of that heat and playing in the mud. Reptiles at this temperature, you know of course that reptiles are ectotherms, so they rely on the external temperature of the world around them to maintain their body heat. But at this temperature, it's a little bit too hot for them to be out basking in the sun. That being said, they're very active around the various trees and in the shade. So I guess that's one good example. I love this spot. It's like an entranceway towards the drainage line, this archway. Created by a beautiful russet fisherman. Oh, butterflies everywhere. Everybody duck. Everybody watch your heads. that you're going to find some real monster trees, the biggest examples of the jackalberries, the leadwoods, even the apple leaf, like that one that's coming up ahead of us. It's probably one of the largest ones that we have on this reserve, apart from the ones on quarantine. For those of you who haven't heard the explanation before and you're wondering what that giant ball of GoPros is on the front of the car, it is a virtual reality rig. It's something that we are working on and just experimenting with for now and getting some really cool footage. There are seven GoPros, all in a ball, all recording, essentially creating what could be a potential for a three-dimensional safari experience. The technology escapes me a little bit. I'm a little bit, what's the word? I'm a bit of a Luddite in that respect. But that's apparently what that whole setup is aiming to do. It boggles my mind that that is something that we can start anticipating in the future. I know that Brent's been hunting butterflies. I've been trying to catch one as they fly past me but so far I've missed out. Oh but what a beautiful place to spend a really hot afternoon. Now, I said that leopards like to come and lie here but you won't ever find one lying around in the sand. The best place to look is up in these huge leadwoods and the big jackalberries because that's where they at least get a little bit of airflow. So they're not going to come and lie in the sand where the wind can't reach them, the sand that's been baked hot by the sun all day going to be moving around where there's, or at least sleeping where there's a little bit of a breeze. Too beautiful. And as the clouds roll in. Wow, 
are now actually you've asked what my most exciting sighting has been on a live safari oh actually it's a really difficult one if i had to choose i think the wildebeest birth this morning for me obviously it's fresh in my mind because it happened today but that was the most incredible moment for me i've never ever seen a wildebeest give birth and to be able to watch that and to know that we are sharing the story of that mother and that baby around the world for me was goosebump material what other hugely exciting I mean every day is exciting and that's the best part is most of the things that happen have been so incredibly unexpected I think very top of the list could also be some of the wild dog sightings that we've enjoyed those pups are just tremendously entertaining and such good value to watch and entertain us those are definitely high up on the list as well and of course when the wild dogs are being chased by the elephants has there been anything involving the spotted hyenas is always an entertaining one not, ne <laughs> not necessarily the most exciting but definitely entertaining and then of course those incredible moments where you witness the big cats hunting are definitely not to be ignored we had one incredible sighting that Brent and I were both filming at where we extended the show I think for almost an hour where the Unkahuma Pride were chasing a herd of buffalo at night and there were just clouds of dust and every now and again the buffalo would turn around and turn it against the Unkahuma Pride and turn it towards them and that was very high up on the list of phenomenally exciting experiences to have had Hello buffalo important lesson on why you should always be careful walking at this time of year especially around these pans just like what where the elephants were playing around with Brent <laughs> that one that's standing at the highest point looking down his nose that's an expression that nobody wants to see on foot And Brian and myself did encounter this particular group of Duggar boys. Just after we finished my first bushwalk, there was a sudden rustling in the bushes and then the sound of dripping water. And a load of Duggar boys stood up and stared us down. And Paul, you're right, the waterholes seem to be the place to be today. All of these mud wallows, you're almost guaranteed to find either a buffalo, a hyena, or maybe a rhino or an elephant spending time wallowing on an afternoon like this. Look how this one's coated in mud. You know you're hot when that seems appealing. That does almost seem appealing to me. <laughs> oh, he's very contented. <laughs> Look at the expression on his face. And the other individual is just a head and some horns. Just took a moment to have a sip of water and it's sort of distinctly <laughs> warm. Quite as refreshing as what I was going for. All right, Buffalo. Well, enjoy your mud wallowing for the afternoon. Let us continue on for our search for the Queen of Juma because you never know, she might have met up with Tingana. She might even be looking for Tingana know that she was mating with him a couple of weeks ago and she's right at the point where if she is pregnant then she's going to ignore him but if she isn't if she isn't pregnant this is exactly about the right time where she'll be coming back into estrus again and be looking for a mating opportunity now of course all of us are hoping that she is pregnant but it's taken a couple of attempts from Tingana so far but it will be a nice way to know for sure whether or not she is.
clouds have definitely rolled in. That was an unexpected way. I thought we were going to have scorching blue skies the whole afternoon. Well, hopefully this is going to bring us some rain. We'll be looking forward to that and maybe a slight drop in temperature tonight. Well, we shall see, but in the meantime, let's find out what the wonderful Brent Leo Smith is up to. There's some woody neck stalks. Looks like they're heading down towards the Buffalo's Hook area. And while you while we were with Jamie, uh, we managed to identify the yellow butterfly. So another one, a Rainier leader. Oh, it's called a, oh no, I've forgotten the common name. Uh, an orange, no, no, that's, yeah. Or autumn leaf vagrant or an orange and lemon. I think I like orange and lemon better than autumn leafed vagrant. And that's the male we saw, the female, not quite as pretty on the underside. Okay, I think that puts us up at about nine. Raisa was saying what the yellows look very similar. Uh, what is the difference between them? Well, the one we saw this morning uh, was not that one. And it was that one. It had the black tips on the wings and also sort of markings on the underside. So that's the, the top side, underside. And then the vagrant we've also saw. Uh, those two black spots, you can't really see them when we saw them, but the lime green color of the underside. And so far, we've got this guy here, the orange and lemon. So Raisa was wondering how to tell the difference between the yellows. And sometimes you have to look very carefully. Isn't it? Doing it this way, very difficult. Much easier when you've got a butterfly net and you've got time. But that's half the challenge of butterflying on Safari Live. And the cloud has come in and hopefully we'll get some more movement out of butterflies and other things. The temperature on the other hand has not dropped. Uh, we're still very, very hot, but we're not being beaten by the sun. And, oh, there's some rain incoming as well. So hopefully it stays away for the duration of the drive. If not, we might be running for cover in about, how long do you have, Brian? 45 minutes? Mm -hmm. If the wind picks up soon. Obviously there are lots of biting insects in Africa and Dear Spriggs is wondering um, if one of these biting insects uh, happened to bite me while I've got malaria for example and then fly across and bite Brian. Uh, would the other person catch it? Uh, and they wouldn't. Why are you sitting so still here? Sorry, it might be a, a new nest of uh, a lapwing. And the lap wing's right next to the car, I'm not running away. And I'm trying to see if that's the heat or if there's another nest. Not complaining too much. That's a crowned lap wing for those who are not sure. No, I can't see a nest. Sorry, about back to your question, Dias Beck. Um, uh, so most of those really bad diseases and stuff like that, malaria, HIV and whatnot, actually will die uh, in that process. They need a very specific sort of survive, to a specific set of circumstances to survive. So I, 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 most of them do not pass on like that. You 
can actually see where the rain starts. So it's between us and the mountains because you, you, you can see the mountains just. If we go, wait, there we go. Beyond that dead knob fawn, you can just make out the mountains there. And then all of a sudden, if you go off to the right, boom, there's the rain. You can see the dark color there, and that's the end of the mountains. Big storm. Brian's found you a, a ray of light shooting through the clouds. Moth flitted by, I thought it might have landed on the vehicle. So we're going to cross across to Jamie very quickly. She's got something fascinating. And eagle eyed Mr. Andrew Francis has. Oh, well, that was well timed spotted an incredible rock monitor for you. Where's it gonna go? Is it gonna go down? Is it gonna go around? Will we find out? Is it going to disappear? Please don't disappear, rock monitor. Well done, Andrew. Thank you, madam. We nearly missed that. Sure. That was a very nice surprise. Down. Is it cooling down? Yeah. Get him from there. I think he is. You see him on the base there. Hello, buddy. Having chatted a little bit about the animals that are active at this time of day or enjoy the heat, here is one very good example. Oh, I can see the grass moving. There it is. Making an appearance behind the log. A rock monitor lizard or a legavan as they are known in South Africa. Hello. Something inherently prehistoric about them and the way that they move. Now, I know it's a rock monitor because of those bands of colouring along his side and along his tail. Water monitors don't have such strikingly clear patches. Is he going down to the drainage line? Yeah. Awesome. Oh, here he comes. There he is. Tree. Oh, he could well, he or she, could well be out and about on the hunt looking for frogs and rodents, birds' eggs, anything along those lines. They're very really resilient and versatile creatures in terms of their diet. Awesome! It's so amazing to watch the way that they move and they're just at, as at home up in the tree or scurrying around the ground and they can move incredibly fast when they want to and definitely not an animal to be cornered. I've come close a couple of times to being bitten by one when I was a child and attempting to catch them as you do, you know. and find him again for you but I think it's going to have disappeared down into the drainage line. Oh no there he goes. I always get so excited when we see some incredible creatures like this. Uh, Chores gate cameras 
You mentioned that the water monitor lizard seems to be smaller in Africa than they are in Asia. This is, I mean, this for this particular rock monitor, this is quite a small individual. They can easily be double that size. But there's a chance that there's a size difference. I mean, Andrew, you've worked in Asia. Did you see that the water monitors were much larger or mm, similar. roughly similar? So this is quite a small example that we've looking, we're looking at. And the last few ones that I've seen have been quite small. As you can see, those birds even might start alarm calling at it. Because at this time of year, when all of the birds are nesting, this is a serious threat to the well-being of their chicks. I love watching the way that they move. It's sideways motion. It's hunting. See the way it's scouting about with that tongue popping out every now and again to draw the scent into the organ of Jacobson at the roof of the mouth. I just heard I think it might have just fallen slightly off the edge of the drainage line don't worry it will bounce but it'll be absolutely fine but I think it did just take a slight surprise tumble because this particular part of the drainage line wall has washed away so it's become very it drops down very steeply and it just vanished down there awesome awesome sighting I wish it all the best in its hunting endeavours for the afternoon. Well spotted, Mr. Andrew. Thank you, madam. The eagle eyes of the cameraman at work. And we're going to try and navigate our way out here without stabbing Andrew, which would be very poor reward for his hard work. But you can see what I mean about how steep the bank is of that wall. And the puffback shrike that was calling there and the drongo, they're both on alert to the fact that this rock monitor is moving around this area. Oh, now we've got to do some serious reversing skill. So that we don't go tumbling down after the leg of our dip. Whoop. Getting some feedback from people in response to the question about Asian monitor lizards and Jerry, Wild Earth's own one and only Jerry. Hello, Jerry. Hope that we will see you back here very soon. Jerry says that during her time in Thailand, the monitor lizards that she saw there were massive, easily four times the size of the one that we saw now. Yes, I imagine that they do get absolutely enormous, particularly because that kind of habitat, I imagine, favours them exceptionally well. That being said, that was a very small monitor lizard that we were looking at. It's definitely, by far, not one of the biggest ones I've ever seen. Oh, good morning, Texel. Good morning. 
How's the Texan? How are you? Good, thanks. Oh, loot to this side. Yo, I've checked Cheetah Cut, I've Buffalo Sook Dam, Cheetah Cut Line, Mulwati, Twin Dams to here, Elephant Skull, Elephant Carcass. I'm trying to be Nyala South to the Binder. Um, where's, where's, sorry? Uh, no, I haven't done Nyala South. Okay, okay, enjoy. Okay, cheers, guys. <laughs> what we say in South Africa when there's no updates and no, no animals around. Lutu. You wonder where all of the animals disappear off to on hot afternoons like this. Because they weren't hiding in the drainage lines. Most of them apparently are in the mud wallows. useful when you do have a moment to stop and to chat to the other guides that are around you. It's a good way of coordinating your search efforts as well so that you don't end up checking the same places twice. Coming up to Treehouse Dam now. Absolutely no water as far as I know since I last checked the treehouse. But hopefully this what looks like rain that's on its way. Hopefully that does a little bit of a job of filling it up again. has asked what the difference is between a blue forked tongue and a pink forked tongue. Forked tongue. It's true. There is a little bit of blue house. I'm quite surprised by that. I'm just going to go and say hello to these male impala on our way through and then we'll go and check the dam properly. But Rich King, um, in what particular sense would we mean in terms of blue pink or blue or pink forked tongues? You mean in terms of on reptiles? Generally the tongues of the reptiles out here are very dark in colour, which usually means that they are coated with melanin. Oh, Impala, are you being camera shy? Really nice big group of mature bachelor boys. the impala as he stomps his foot there there are black patches of fur right close there you go you can sort of see as he lifts up his ankle and Billy is watching in Texas you wanted if you wondered if I could tell you a little bit more about those black patches well hidden beneath those are metatarsal glands that give off a particular pheromone or a particular scent and there's some disagreement between biologists as to what the purpose of those are, but most seem to think that it's quite a good way of allowing the bird to, the bird, the impala herd to stay together when they're being chased. So rather than spit off and get separated, then they are able to follow the scent of the pheromone that gets released. And of course, then there is safety in numbers. Well, I'm going to go and check properly around Treehouse and see if I can find any tracks of our Queen of Juma. And in the meantime, Brent has a bird to show you. So we've got a red-breasted swallow. And the fact that it's already a sort of 
perched and not moving and you can see how dark the sky is behind it i've got a feeling that this rain is coming in a hell of a lot faster than we originally thought and the breeze is picking up and it is literally a dark morass that's approaching you can see the rain off to the left and that's the rain that's furthest from us just see it with that pink tinge there falling but the rain that's closest to us is coming in slightly more from the north and that dark dark patch there on the left of screen at the moment and i mean it was so far away when we started the safari be quite nice to break the heat so we've been seeing a few firm nest fog nests about and Matthew I'm at is nine years old would like to know are there any animals that would eat them I've never seen anything open up and figure out that there's actually tadpoles in there. I'm sure once the tadpoles drop down into the water, lots of stuff will eat them. But Brian's looking very, very warily over his shoulder at <laughs> the storm. Uh, but Matthew, I've never seen an animal that will eat foam nest, the foam nest of the frog. So you guys, it's gonna be on the radio for a second. Standing by. Yeah, it's pretty, I've, I've checked, checked this area quite extensively. I've walked in the block. Um, and no sign uh, from the last tracks. But I'm still confident he's probably flat cat somewhere in this area. So it might be worthwhile having a second vehicle here. Oh, Eddie's! Another breeding herd of elephants. They don't look like they're in quite a bigger rush as the last one. them coming towards us in an open area and go try and follow them in some thicker bush. It's important for us to stay hydrated in this weather. Oh, did you hear that, Brian? Actually, why are we waiting for these ellies to pop out? It's quite a beautiful view of the Drakensberg and some rain and wonderful orange light. Okay. 
So that's the rain that's quite far away from us. And see the mountains. Thin veil of rain in front of them. It's a thick veil of rain that blocks them up that makes me a little bit more worried. Just start hearing the thunder. These low felt thunderstorms can be incredible. It doesn't look like they're gonna come through here. It looks like they're moving through the block. So we're going to loop around. Washington's wondering, how do they break it at the root? Um, or is it possible an elephant's only born with one tusk? It is possible, it's just improbable. Uh, and when they don't actually break it at the root, Benny, because remember, a third of an elephant's tusk is not visible to us, so it's inside. So they're not breaking it at the root, they're just breaking it in a part we can't see. So they're heading down. I think we might catch up with them on the Aubrey's Road. Who knows, there could be some more eddies about. Harlow crossing the road. There's a man. There's an impendingly large storm approaching. And Mia, who's six years old, hi Mia, would like to know, do the birds get blown out of their trees? Well, normally they just hold on really tight, close their eyes and get whacked all around. Uh, but sometimes their nests and their babies get blown out during these big storms. So it is possible, Mia, it's very sad, but when that baby bird falls out, it will provide a, meat, a dinner for insects or maybe snakes and other animals. So nothing ever goes to waste out here. Hello, bully. The same heady bull we saw this morning is not 100% relaxed, so we're going to stay a little bit further away. Hello, big boy. Probably early 20s. Maybe even as old as 25, 26. Looks like there's another bull behind him. Could be a little bachelor group. They should pop out if you open up their head. And while we do that, Jose. Hello, Jose. Welcome on the Sunset Safari. You're with us for the morning of oh, the Sunrise Safari. Um, Jose would like to know what does the cameraman do when it starts to rain? Well, is that we've got rain covers and they're designed that we can actually operate almost fully in a sort of light rain and we've got and a cover for the camera as well but in heavy rain uh, we've got lots of electrical equipment all around behind us and whatnot uh, we don't dilly dally too much we we we, we batten down batten down the hatches and and hit high speed for home It looks like there might be a bigger bull behind that guy. Very broken area. Very difficult to get into. There they. So 
hoping might come walking down this path. Another bull, but also another young bull. And quarry tickets. Hello, little man. Give me a second, just going to call it in on the radio. Two early bulls, sandy patch, and about halfway between Vertella Axis and the junction with Bubbles of Cut Line. So I pass behind us. Oh, a little bit nervous, these guys. Hey, Firm Tax. So these guys are a little bit nervous. We're not going to stay with them too long. We're going to go find some other hennies who might not be so nervous. So, Brian, any bets on when the first raindrop is going to hit? Brian says 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. well, I think that's a very good guess. But you never know, it might blow completely around us. I'm afraid, I don't think so. This wall is probably about 100 kilometers wide. Jamie says 30 minutes, not 20. So I, oh, do I agree with my girlfriend or do I agree with my cameraman? Oh, tough decisions out here in the boat. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I think I'm going to stick with Brian on this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there we go. I'll face the repercussions later. I might even be a bit sooner. There it is. Bucketing down to the west. And it's very, very still and calm. So if the wind blows heavily before when the storm's still far away, it normally means the storm will be quite light. But when you get this sort of the real, that's where that saying comes from, the calm before the storm. You can see there the rain. Oh dear. Oh dear. And just before that sort of first real set of rain, you get that sort of temperature drops of about three or four degrees Celsius. And uh, it's very noticeable. Sure, this is a lot of rain. You can actually see how far it is now. We can actually get the distance. And looking at the color, if we zoom in on the on the ground to the right there on the edge, Brian, it's possible that the main body of the storm might be closer. But you can actually see the rains there. Mm, seven kilometers, eight kilometers, is my guess. So depending on how fast the storm is moving, and it has been building it incredible. Um, might even be a bit late on the 20 minute call. And if you look off to the east, it looks like a perfect blue sunny, well, not quite perfect, but the clouds are well, the sky's bluish. And then <laughs> whatever is rapidly advancing in our direction. Sure. 
interesting storm is on its way. We've got time though. I reckon about maybe 15 more minutes before I make a judgment call as to whether I need to race back or not. A lot of it's moving up around the north of us. There's not too much stuff coming directly from the west just yet. We shall see. I could be proved completely wrong, in which case I will pay the price and be completely soaking. Now, as all of our regular viewers will know, we travel around with a lot of incredibly intricate and delicate electronic equipment. As you can imagine, to be able to bring this kind of safari to you live it involves a huge amount of technology. But for that reason, we generally try not to take any kind of risks in terms of exposure to rain and storms. We're also driving around with a very large metal rod sticking up into the sky, which makes me personally feel a little bit like a mobile lightning conductor. If the storm does hit, then we will be racing for home. I just wanted to have a quick look around Arethusa Dam and see if we can figure out where shadows are around. Okie yeah, okay. dokie, well, I have a look around Arethusa before turning for home. Let's head across to Brent and find out what he's up to. So, we've caught up with those Ellies that we thought might move through the block. Here we go. Hello, elephants. All the eddies seem to be slightly on edge today. Oh, these guys don't look too bad. Hello, elephants. There's quite a few of them spread out all around us. I know this herd looking at that female. I think this is Mr. Rinkley Bottom's herd looking at that female. There is a female who looks very similar to Mr. Rinkley Bottom's mom. She's got long tusks like her, except she's got very distinct uh, grass notches in her trunk and her tusks. And I'm trying to have a look and see. Ooh, ba -do -do. Yeah, the thunder. Big adult female. I do see grass notches, so possibly not, Mr. Oh, here it comes. Here's the wind. Where's the first drop? The best place to always see the first drop is on the bonnet of the car. They all seem a little bit on edge today, the eddies. Oh, we're not going to move any further. Oh, here comes the wind. And Ellie's don't like when they can't. Yes, well, that is an absolutely massive female at the back. I mean, she is huge. She almost looks like a bull. Probably because she is a bull. Just checking if everyone was. It's that young bull, the same one we saw a little bit earlier. Well, I'm not giving, cutting off any eddies. It's got very dark all of a sardine. Yeah, these ones are a little bit more out in the open. Across to Jamie quickly. She's got another Nile monitor or rock monitor. We seem to be having the monitor luck today. There is one very fat individual, hugely full-bellied, with a rock monitor. About the same size as the one that we saw earlier, also on the prowl. Searching around there, scouring 
for potential prey. But whenever this one is eaten, it was a particularly good meal. I know it's hard to see, but it's got a very full belly. Tongue shooting out to serve its sensory purpose. Oh, something scurried across in front of us. I didn't notice that. Now that I've switched the car off, there's the distinct feeling that we're about to get caught in some kind of downpour. And I think maybe it might be time to turn for home. I haven't even made it to Arethusa Dam yet, but it's starting to make me feel a little bit nervous. Head east, head east as fast as possible towards this, the clearer patches of sky. Where's our monitor gone? Alrighty, well we're going to turn and race for home and in the meantime let's head back across to Brent. So we're just going to have a quick look across some pile of plains where now most of the cloud is above us and I can actually see the rain probably oh, less than 3-4 kilometers from us now. Oh, sorry, Brian, I'm stopping on an awkward angle there. And so I think this one's going to be quite one of those sneak, sneak attack storms. You can see all the Impala on Sandy Patch, sorry, not Impala Plains. And it almost seems like with this wind swirling, we're being engulfed. I can actually smell the rain now even. And that is our cue. And this doesn't look like a, a poultry light drizzle. This looks like something that could compete um, with... Oh, what was that book, right? The Tempest. The Tempest. Man, it's incredible. Okay, that's it. There we go. That's good. Right. Fine, you can see how the dust from the wind is coming. Very close. And when I say I can smell rain, I can't actually smell the water. What I can smell is the of water hitting the earth and that sort of wet dust smell. enough ahead of it for now so I'll just slow down for a bit this oh sorry hello 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 sorry I didn't see you little boy I'm sorry there's a storm coming I have to keep going here we go see now there's a perfect situation if we had kept on driving at high speed past him he might have got upset and chased the car and we don't want that we don't want to teach our elephants to chase cars uh, that's why I stopped, slowed down, immediately sort of made some noise. Oh, there's more, lots more elephants down here. Those are far off the road. Oh, here we go. Now, if I get wet, it's your fault, elephants. Making me slow down like this. And with this wind, they're not going to be that relaxed. You can already see a little bit uneasy. All the eddies we've seen this afternoon have been a little bit uneasy. Oh, seems except even old girl. Oh, except for her. She seems completely fine. Oh, she's got, she got half a year or is it folded behind? I didn't see. Half a year. Almost looks like she's only got half an ear. Mm. Uh, I know she has been seen, but this is the first time I've seen her. Now that. Uh, that is a story I'd like to know. Probably one we never will. So I think we're close enough to home to risk to the first raindrop of these ellies. 
And I do feel when the first raindrop hits now, the rest will be up. <laughs> and it wasn't only one, it was about 20 in one go. This was just saying, I think the raindrops are not gonna take their time when they come. Normally you sort of get one blop, blop, but now this is literally, they started coming quickly, quickly. Very small at the moment. I'd rather, I'd prefer to be safe before the big ones arrive. So if we thought this was going to be a light rain or a drizzle, uh, we, would, we would stay out. As I said, this, is, this looks like the tempest rolling in. on the camera lens is the rain's coming from behind us for now it's going to be, be coming from everywhere shortly it's amazing we look out to the east and it looks like it's a bright sunny day and yet we are here and clouded in darkness Start seeing that. Oh, we all, all okay. Okay, it's starting to come down a bit harder now. I'm speeding up. So, guys, I don't think so. I think we're going to dash for cover. It's been great having you on the Sunset Safari. We really need the rain. I know it might cut the safari short, but we really do need the rain. We are in the close of a great drought, uh, and every little bit of water counts. So have a fantastic time, and don't forget to join us for the Sunrise Safari. I'm going to try and escape the tempest, and hopefully we'll see you later, but more likely we'll see you tomorrow.